Jason, it's been a while since we've caught up. There's a lot going on in the energy space, especially with hydrogen becoming a focal point for the global energy transition. What's your take on how things are shaping up with green hydrogen? It really has been a while, Selena. You're absolutely right. Hydrogen is definitely becoming a game changer. On a global scale, there's a massive push towards incorporating green hydrogen into energy systems, but we're still early in the journey. You know, it becomes absolutely clear when you really dive into the numbers. The Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research in Germany just released a study that's incredibly eye-opening. They highlighted that to meet the global climate goals set by the Paris Agreement, we need to increase electrolyzer capacity by a mind-blowing 6,000 to 8,000 times by 2050. It's a massive undertaking, but it's not impossible, especially if we push for rapid development and widespread adoption of the technology. The challenge is huge, but the potential is there. Oh, 6,000 to 8,000 times. That's such a massive scale up. What they're saying is that current electrolyzer capacities are nowhere near what we need to achieve climate neutrality by 2050. To put it into perspective, we're talking about a tenfold increase in renewable energy production as well to supply the necessary power for those electrolyzers. It's a monumental task, but there are historical precedents that show large-scale transformations can happen. Especially with coordinated policy action and technological innovation. Absolutely. It's like the large-scale mobilizations we've seen in history. During World War II, the U.S. managed to ramp up aircraft production rapidly with a coordinated effort. Or look at how China transformed its high-speed rail system in a short period. Massive public investments and centralized planning allowed for incredible speed in technology deployment. If we take those lessons and apply them to hydrogen, I think we could see the same kind of leap. That's a great point. It really highlights how urgent this transition is. Take the EU, for example. They have set an ambitious goal to produce 10 million tons of green hydrogen by 2030. But if you look at their current plans, they're only aiming for 2.7 gigawatts of electrolyzer capacity by 2025. To put that into perspective, reaching their 10 million tons target will require a much larger electrolyzer capacity, likely in the tens of gigawatts, to produce that much hydrogen. So there's a significant gap between their current trajectory and what's needed to meet their 2030 goal, right? Exactly. That gap is a huge concern. Right now, electrolyzer technology is improving, but there's a big difference between pilot projects and scaling up to meet global demand. The scale-up required isn't just a technical challenge. It's a financial one, too. Take the recent situation in Australia, for example a $750 million green hydrogen plant in South Australia, which was supposed to be the world's largest hydrogen electrolyzer facility, was canceled. The project faced huge cost overruns and a lack of buyer interest, even though Australia has vast renewable resources. This highlights how financial uncertainties can really hinder progress, even in regions with abundant energy potential. That's the reality many countries face. Securing the necessary financial backing is just as critical as the technology itself. And it's not just about individual projects. There's a broader issue of scaling up. For instance, the EU's target of 40 gigawatts of renewable hydrogen capacity by 2030 is still possible, but it will require massive investments and rapid scaling of production. From securing affordable renewable energy to building out the infrastructure for large-scale electrolyzers, it's a multifaceted challenge that needs a lot of coordination and support. This is where we can look at some of the emerging players in the green hydrogen space. India, for example, is tapping into its huge renewable energy potential to scale up hydrogen production. Adani Energy Solutions just secured a $325 million project in Gujarat to develop a transmission system that will support green hydrogen production. It's a great example of how developing countries are also leveraging their renewable resources to drive cleaner energy and contribute to the global hydrogen economy. Absolutely. India aims to produce 5 million tons of green hydrogen annually by 2030, which is no small feat. But it's a great example of how developing countries are leveraging their renewable resources to move toward cleaner energy. And that's a key point, isn't it? 
developing countries like India have such an advantage in terms of renewable resources, solar and wind especially. They don't have the same legacy energy infrastructure that developed countries have, so they can leapfrog over traditional fossil fuel-based systems and adopt cleaner technologies like hydrogen. Plus, if they can get the infrastructure right, hydrogen could drive significant economic growth. Exactly, and we're seeing similar developments in Africa as well. For instance, Mauritania, a country in West Africa, is launching a massive $34 billion green hydrogen project. The initial phase of the project, located near the capital Nouakchott, aims to produce 400 megawatts of green hydrogen power, with plans to expand to 10 gigawatts in the future. This initiative is one of the largest in the region and serves as a prime example of how African nations, with their abundant renewable resources, can position themselves as key players in the global green hydrogen market. With its vast solar and wind potential, Mauritania could play a pivotal role in Africa's hydrogen market, especially as the global demand for green hydrogen continues to rise. It's fascinating, isn't it? Africa's renewable energy resources give them a unique opportunity to shape their energy future, and hydrogen could be a cornerstone of that. The Mauritania project alone could really position the continent as a major supplier of green hydrogen. Mauritania is definitely an example of how smaller nations can harness their renewable resources to become key players in the global energy market. With the Mauritania project, they're not just producing energy for domestic use, but positioning themselves as an exporter. And that's critical for Africa's energy future. Many African nations are starting to realize the economic potential of renewable energy, and projects like these are a great stepping stone. It's a win-win, sustainable energy for the region and a stake in the global hydrogen economy. And that's where global collaboration becomes so important. The World Bank is really pushing for international partnerships to help accelerate the deployment of clean hydrogen. They're working on a 10 gigawatt capacity initiative to boost hydrogen production from renewable sources. That's huge, especially for developing countries that may need additional support to get these projects off the ground. It's incredible how so many developing nations are stepping up in the green hydrogen race. The scale of some of these projects is mind-blowing. Take the Helios Green Fuels project in Saudi Arabia, for example. They're aiming to produce 240,000 tons of green hydrogen annually. And the fact that it's located in Neom, which is being positioned as a high-tech city of the future, makes it even more fascinating. It's not just about hydrogen production, but about how it fits into the broader vision of sustainable development. Exactly, Selena. Saudi Arabia is really aiming to diversify its economy away from oil with this massive hydrogen project. And the way they're integrating solar and wind energy into this is impressive, especially given their vast desert landscapes and coastal winds. It's a great example of how countries with unique geographical advantages can really lead in the transition to green energy. Namibia's Hyphen Hydrogen Energy Project is another game changer. It's a $10 billion investment that will produce 300,000 tons of green hydrogen each year, all powered by solar and wind. Namibia's potential to become a key player in Africa's green energy future is something to watch. This project also highlights how nations can create jobs and stimulate industrial growth by tapping into their renewable resources. I agree. Namibia is an interesting case. The Sao Kaib National Park is a unique location, and with the right infrastructure, they can really position themselves as a leader in green hydrogen. It's not just about clean energy, it's also about creating an economic hub. And considering Africa's potential in renewable energy, projects like these could help the continent leapfrog traditional energy systems and move directly into cleaner, more sustainable options. Definitely. Egypt and the UAE's collaboration on green hydrogen is another one I'm keeping an eye on. They're targeting 4G to dollars of electrolyzer capacity by 2030, and their focus on utilizing solar and wind energy in the Suez Canal economic zone is strategic. With Egypt's geographic advantage, they could become a key supplier of hydrogen for both domestic needs and export markets. It's incredible how much these countries are aligning with their renewable energy goals. 
Yes, and I think this is where the scale-up challenges become a little more tangible. Projects like these are ambitious but achievable, especially if the right investment and policy frameworks are in place. Egypt's strategic location near global shipping routes also gives it an edge. They're tapping into existing infrastructure to make the transition smoother, which will be crucial as hydrogen production and distribution grow. Moving to Latin America, Chile's HIEX Green Hydrogen Project stands out too. Powered by solar energy from the Atacama Desert, it's using PM electrolysis to create green hydrogen for ammonium nitrate production. Chile is sitting on one of the world's richest solar resources, and if they play their cards right, they could become a leader in sustainable energy in the region. What's especially interesting is how projects like this can create synergies with industries already in place. It's all about creating a sustainable ecosystem, right? Chile's existing mining industry and agricultural needs could align well with green hydrogen production, creating a circular economy of sorts. And with the right regulatory framework, projects like HIEX could transform not only Chile, but also other Latin American countries into important players in the green hydrogen space. The region's wealth of natural resources, from wind to solar, gives it a huge advantage. Brazil is taking a similar approach with its green hydrogen projects in Rio Grande do Sul. They're leveraging offshore wind farms to power hydrogen production. What I really like about Brazil's approach is their focus on ensuring that the transition also drives economic recovery and resilience. After the floods in 2024, there's an urgency to accelerate their renewable energy adoption, and green hydrogen seems like the perfect fit for their long-term energy and economic plans. Exactly. Brazil's Just Energy Transition Plan shows that they're not just thinking about energy transition for the sake of the environment, but also as a way to build a more resilient economy. The offshore wind potential in Brazil is enormous, and by combining it with green hydrogen, they could create a model for integrating renewable energy, job creation, and disaster resilience all in one go. Indonesia's green hydrogen facility on Sumatra is another one to watch. Using hydroelectric sources for electrolysis, this project is set to become the largest hydrogen facility in Southeast Asia. The integration of hydroelectric power with green hydrogen production is interesting, especially for a country with such vast water resources. It's a smart approach, tapping into their abundant hydroelectric resources. Southeast Asia is expected to see massive growth in energy demand. By investing in green hydrogen now, Indonesia can ensure it's meeting that demand with clean energy. And the added bonus is that it'll help reduce carbon emissions in key sectors like transportation and industry, giving them a major economic advantage in the coming decades. Finally, I have to mention something really exciting, the Samaric Renewable Energy Project in Malaysia. This project is a perfect example of how creativity and innovation can drive the future of green hydrogen. What's really intriguing about this project is the use of floating solar panels on hydroelectric reservoirs. By placing the solar panels on the water, they can actually reduce evaporation from the reservoirs and increase the overall efficiency of the system. This is a fantastic way to maximize space and generate renewable energy without taking up precious land. And it gets even better. The project is utilizing PEM electrolysis for producing green hydrogen. With a planned capacity of 60 megawatts, this project is a significant step forward for Malaysia's renewable energy agenda. It's a bold move that not only positions Malaysia as an important player in green hydrogen technology in Asia, but also shows how countries can creatively combine different renewable resources to achieve their clean energy goals. It's a great example of innovation in action. Malaysia's approach could be a game changer especially with its aim to diversify the energy mix and reduce emissions. The use of floating solar panels is one of those out-of-the-box ideas that could help overcome land scarcity issues in densely populated regions. And PEM electrolysis is an ideal choice for such a setup. It's amazing to see how developing countries are leading the way with these projects. It's going to be exciting to watch how these projects evolve and contribute to the global green hydrogen market.